If you are pregnant or you've recently had a baby, this podcast is for you. I am your host, Kath Bequee, a physiotherapist working in women's health and mum of three. Inside my online program, Fitness Mama, I just love helping support women to care for their bodies during pregnancy, prepare their bodies for birth and support their after birth recovery, helping them feel confident and strong inside out during this important stage of their lives. In this podcast, join me each week as we dive into all things pregnancy care, childbirth and postnatal recovery, helping you through every step of the journey. It is absolutely possible to feel amazing and confident in our bodies during this motherhood journey, and I want that for you. Come and say hi to me on Instagram at fitnessmama, and let's dive into today's episode. Hello, and welcome back to the Pregnancy, Birth and Recovery podcast. So today I'm chatting about pregnancy fitness and investing back into our body. And this episode today is actually a rerun when I was a guest on the No BS Approach to Motherhood podcast. So that podcast is hosted by nutritionists Catherine and Shelley, and I will link their lovely podcast in the show notes. But this episode today talk all about exercising safely during pregnancy, how to enhance our pregnancy well-being, how to invest back into our body and care for our body during this important phase of our lives. So whether or not you're pregnant or you've had your baby or you're planning to become pregnant, I trust this is going to be a super valuable episode. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So start by an in, with an introduction and then let's dive into it. Fantastic. Thanks for having me on your amazing podcast. It, um, As you said, I love chatting all things fitness during this stage because it's not just about fitness, is it? The pregnant body changes so much and our postpartum body changes. So yes, as you said, I'm a physiotherapist. I've got an online program for pregnancy and postpartum, helping to exercise during this phase of important phase of life. I'm also a pelvic health physio, so um, pelvic floor assessments, all that jazz. And I realized pretty early on in my career, I think you start off life as a physio thinking it's all about sports physio. So um, you know, as a new grad, I started doing some physioing and sports training at the local footy club. And I soon realized in the middle of winter, on a windy, cold day, I was having to massage these sweaty hamstrings. And I thought, no, this is not for me. <laughs> so um, I, and I had a placement at university in women's health, and I've just fallen in love ever since with it. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. And your mama as well? <clears throat> yes, I've got three little girls growing up into big girls. Um, my baby is five and eight and ten. So we're getting over that whole, you know, just started school. So we're definitely in a new phase of um, parenting and, you know, ch- children life. Um, it's fun. It's a fun family stage. Um, but I also, I think a bit, bit of me will always yearn for a little baby. And so I do love chatting all things pregnancy and postpartum because it's a beautiful phase. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us, I guess, Kath, around the exercise, because for me, even through my pregnancy, you, you know, you always hear you should be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that. You've got to take care of this, but don't do it like that. Do it like this. And it's a very confusing and overwhelming space, especially if, for me, I'm just using myself as an example, I'm not a big exercise person. You know, I, I, I don't go to the gym. I don't go to Pilates. You know, I'm, I am I walk. So exercise for me isn't a big part of my usual daily routine. So talk us through you know, what you really like to teach your clients and what you like to preach and support women with, with you know, postpartum, pregnancy, even preconception care and what that looks like yeah sure big big question (laughs) but um let's go into it (laughs) so 
I guess the things to note, like as you said, you walk and that's fantastic. It's free. It's amazing for mental health. I think at the end of the day, we want to just find something that works for us and our body and our lifestyle and what feels easy for us. Because as you said, we don't want to be told we should be doing this and we should be doing that. So I just want to say that at the start, there's no should in all of this, in anything that I'll be talking about, because it's all, you know, it comes down to you and your life and your preferences and how you're feeling and all that sort of stuff. But I guess to take a step back, like we all know the benefits of exercise, right? In terms of you know, medical, medically and all the prevention of health conditions and obesity and heart disease and all the rest. We know all that. And it doesn't change with pregnancy. I guess the issue with pregnancy, well, I shouldn't say issue, but the thing with pregnancy is that our body does go through a lot and our body changes and we might experience fatigue like we've never felt it or aches and pains or like we've never felt it. Or if you're trying to conceive, like, and I'm sure we're going to get into this, but there's, you know, some of us might need to do different things to other, like we, we might need to adjust and change our exercise levels. So I think that's really important to note is when we're pregnant, we do have individual needs that are unique to pregnancy. And that's where I think instead of exercise being something we should do, like we all know that, but instead I like to come at, come of it from a place of let's help exercise, help us feel better inside out and prepare our body for what it's going to go through. Um, because of the stats are like the stats are glaringly obvious. It's one in three women who've been pregnant and had a baby have incontinence. One in two women have some degree of prolapse. So those statistics are real. And that's why I come at it from a place of, okay, let's support this beautiful, unique changing body, um, to support it moving forwards in the next months, a few months and years. Mm. And if we take it back to preconception care, which we touched on a little bit there, you know, I'm the opposite to Catherine. And if I think back to when I had Van, I was a CrossFitter. So I was doing CrossFit during my whole preconception sort of um, stage. And it, I felt really good doing that. I fell pregnant and that was great for me, right? Through that pregnancy, I continued to do CrossFit. But that obviously changed with my next two and three and my body changed and things were different. And even though that felt right for me at the time, it's not always something that we recommend as practitioners because one thing that Catherine and I are often speaking about, particularly in that preconception phase, is the different stresses that can occur um, for our bodies, one of those being exercise and our body not being able to perceive the difference between a good stress versus bad and say something like an F45 class or a CrossFit, that's not working for you. That could essentially be perceived by your body as a bad stress, which we're trying to lower in that Mm. preconception phase. So talk to us about preconception exercise. And obviously there is going to be different levels to this depending on a woman's journey. So let's start with Kath. If a woman is, I guess no one really knows their fertility journey. So yeah, just take us through what you think exercise should look like preconception. Mm. And this is a yeah, great question because it is a tough one. And, you know, I've spoken to doctors who also don't have the answer, like, because for example, one woman who wants to conceive their idea of going for a five kilometer run every day might be really taxing on the body. And as you said, um, a, a big stressor. Whereas another woman who wants to run five kilometers a day, who used to run 20 kilometers a day for her, that's easy. Mm-hmm. So I think this is where it really does. Um, it, it's a little bit of trial and error and it's also seeing where you're at in your life and is there anything that you need to change. So obviously you're coming at it from a place, like let's say you're trying to conceive and it's taking longer for you to conceive than you'd hope. You know, I assume yeah, they've spoken to their doctor and cleared all that. So if you're starting to look at what else is happening holistically, that is when might suggest 
for them to look at, well, document what's happening in their life in terms of exercise. And then we could adjust and tweak it based on them. Mm. How's that for a gray answer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. for some women, that will mean perhaps we need to incorporate a bit few more walks and, you know, get out there into the sunshine and the fresh air and release those feel good and hormone, feel good hormones and dolphins. You know, perhaps they're locked in a, an office building all day, not seeing any sunlight and they're really stressed. And for them, doing more exercise would be beneficial. And then there's others, as you said, who have been going pretty hard with perhaps bodybuilding or CrossFit or whatever journey it is they're on, and we need to pull back their training. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And would you say, you know, someone like me, I guess you would call sedentary to an extent, Could would something, you know, in that preconception phase like doing body weight stuff, really activating the core and getting all of that ready because that's something that I'm looking at now. Um, you know, I would love to have another baby whenever that time is right. But I'm also a little bit fearful that my body is not in a stage to carry a, a pregnancy because I haven't exercised in such a long period of time. So I've got no core strength. I know my pelvic floor is good because I do do my pelvic floor exercises. Um, but it, is that something you'd recommend to for people who are a little bit more sedentary like me to maybe ramp up a little bit of exercise in that preconception phase so you can continue that into pregnancy? Or, or what would you suggest there? Who says dealing with toilet training accidents or sickness has to be a drag? Not anymore. Introducing Spewy Bed Mats, your ultimate sidekick for hassle-free nights and super quick cleanups. Picture this. No more wrestling with soggy sheets or remaking beds at 3am. Spewy Bed Mats swoop in to save the day, soaking up to 2 litres of liquid. Plus, with their waterproof backing, you can kiss leaks goodbye and say hello to a better night's sleep. For peace of mind and stress-free nights, order now at spewy.com.au. That's S-P-E-W-Y dot and use the code FITNEST15 to receive $15 off your first order. Yeah, so this is a good one. Um, again, I think, is it your first baby conception or have you already had? Yeah, so for the, whoever's listening, is it their first baby or is it their second, third baby? Because I think that's going to change slightly because if you've already had a baby, yes, you probably are weak in your core to some degree or pelvic floor, perhaps not, but we do know they're usually the weakest links, whether or not you have a vaginal birth or a cesarean birth. So has there been a rehab? Um, has there been the postnatal rehab after your baby? Or do you perhaps need to start at square one and start to introduce them? And it doesn't need to be like you don't, doesn't mean you need to go and spend hours at a gym every day. For, it might mean 10 minutes of some beautiful core exercises that you can do a couple of days a week at home with your toddler next to you. So it doesn't, so yes, I would say if it's your second or third, I would start to introduce potentially um, some pelvic floor and core because it probably is your weakest link. Um, and it's, um, I like to use the analogy after, like, let's say you're a football footballer and you, you, you do competitive football and you, you're out in the footy field and you suddenly feel your hamstrings burning and you've strained your hamstring. Or let's say you've twisted and you've done your ACL and you need an ACL reconstruction. What generally happens here is there'll be a period of rest. Um, then there might be the like there might be the surgery um, if it's an ACL reconstruction. Then there's period of rest. And then generally, and this is fantastic, but sports injuries have rehab. You might have a walking protocol, a gentle stretching protocol. Okay, let's start some strengthening, right? You're strong. Let's start some run-throughs. Okay, now you can go back into training with all your teammates. Maybe just start off with 20 minutes of training. Don't do a full training session, you know, and then eventually you start your competitive football. Whereas after having a baby, six weeks later, you see the GP. They're like, yep, all good to go. 
see you next time. <laughs> That's what my <laughs> doctor said. Um, so this notion of postnatal rehab, it doesn't exist, but I would argue that having a baby is more on the body than any footy injury. They might not agree, but that's what I reckon. So, um, so if in your, um, circumstance, Catherine is, yes, I, if you're thinking maybe another baby along the way, definitely set you up because we know those stats, as I said, with pelvic floor incontinence, prolapse, but also aches and pains, you know, it's, it's harder once we get older and we have babies. The body breaks down. <laughs> um, it does. Yeah. And how in just, I guess, for the general woman listening to this, in terms of pregnancy exercise, what are your non-negotiables, if you have any, that, you know, really support, you know, you, you know, you get the hip pain and the girdle pain and all of those things. Like do you have a non-negotiable kind of list of exercise that really will benefit most pregnant women? Well, let's go through the trimesters. I think that's a really nice way to group it because, as we said before, there's so many different, um, so many different things can happen with pregnancy. So, for trimester one, this might be when you're feeling a bit more nauseous, you don't have the energy. Um, this is also a stage with exercise. We don't want to overheat our body when this embryo is really small. So that overheating is really important. So not the time to. You know, if it's a 40-degree day, you don't want to be going for long walks and saunas and that sort of stuff. Um, so I think that first stage of um, first trimester, it's all about what feels good to you, what feels easy. Is it going for a walk and meeting up with a friend or is it going into the sunshine if you're feeling nauseous and doing some beautiful stretches and exercises in the sunshine? Whereas that would be very different from a term trimester two where you might be feeling like you've got more energy, um, you might be feeling fantastic. Sure, definitely that's when we would want to introduce some beautiful strength work, some core work and get, I guess, um, get into our more traditional exercise. And I do just want to say the guidelines from RANSCOG, the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Obstetricians and Gynecology, like exercise guidelines don't really change from if you're pregnant or not. So they're still recommending around 300 minutes a week, which if you break that down, what's that? About 30 to 40 minutes a day. Um, they still recommend including strength work, and I add strength and core work of two to three times a week. So those guidelines are the same no matter if you're pregnant or not. Um, the thing is with pregnancy we don't want to be working at a high intensity. It needs to be mod more of a moderate t intensity. So that's like the walking test. Have you heard of that before? No. Sorry, the talking test. Oh, my gosh, the walking, talking <laughs> test. So that's where if you're doing some exercise, you should be able to have a chat. You should be able to talk. If you're gasping for air and you're too breathless, that's an indication that you should back off. So that's a really easy test that all pregnant women should probably just be aware of when exercising. Um, the problem with trimester two is that can also be where pelvic girdle pain creeps up. So yeah. this is where the guidelines, are, they're a little bit hopeless in that, sure, how do you do 300 minutes of, if you've been a walker and you're suddenly thinking, okay, I want to do my 300 minutes of exercise per week, but I've got really bad pelvic girdle pain, but I've heard walking is really good for pregnancy, like, what what do we do? It's because, and that's where these guidelines, it's they're guidelines only. So if you've got pelvic girdle pain, walking might not be great. And it probably isn't, I hate to say. Um, that might be when we need to substitute it with some pelvic girdle pain friendly workouts. Um, is, yeah. So this is what I show, I've got a fitness mama. So it might be some gentle Pilates that you can do at home, but it might even be walk going to the pool and walking in the pool. So it's really important with these um, stages of pregnancy is we do tailor it. And then again, a third trimester of pregnancy um, might be feeling exhausted, <laughs> but this might also be where we think about our exercises in terms of preparing our body for birth. And that's where I love to include um, pelvic floor. Yes, it's about strengthening, but also that relaxation aspect into exercises and releasing the pelvic floor because this can help with pelvic floor relaxation. You know, we want to open up 
everything and open up that womb for the baby to travel through when it's time for the baby to give birth. We don't want to be zipping up that pelvic floor and tightening everything up around that area. Does that make sense? Mm, We could have a whole topic on this. Oh, my gosh. So my non-negotiables, back to your question. I think if everyone can include some walking, amazing. It's free, gets you outside, gets you moving. But I think we need to combine that with some pregnancy-specific strength and core of some degrees. Like I really do believe that um, to support our body, to help prevent that pelvic girdle pain, or if you have it, to help treat it, um, to help prepare your abs for, um, yeah, to help support your abs because there might be abdominal muscle separation, all that sort of thing. As I said, pelvic floor and core, the weakest link. So I think all pregnant women in the ideal world, if they could have access to this sort of stuff, that would be amazing. Mm. And then. If we've then done those exercises to prepare for birth, what does the postpartum period look like? And, again, I know this is going to be very specific to the individual. Um, I know for me I went and got clearance from my physio before I started doing anything and worked up, like built my way up through gentle pelvic and core exercises like what you're saying. And I had an internal examination done as well several times just as well because I had three kids in three years. So my body, I felt needed quite a lot of loving and and I was completely sedentary. Sedentary? Yeah. Sedentary. 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 Thank you. (laughs) We knew what we were I was like, that doesn't sound right. Um, For my second and third pregnancy, I did nothing. Like Eleni's, I think I did some physio, but then by the time I had the two toddlers, I didn't do anything for Audrey's because I had severe pelvic girdle pain. Um, and I just didn't want to make that worse, you know? And yeah. So anyway, so I made up for it in my postpartum period. So talk us through what that period for women should look like in an ideal world. Can I just say, Shelley, you ticked all the boxes in your postpartum period. Thank you. I thought I did. (laughs) I'm sorry you couldn't find any nice exercises to do when you're pregnant with pelvic girdle pain, though, because I'm sure there would have been, we could have definitely found you some beautiful things to help you feel better, not worse. Mm, I know. And you know what? I probably could have, Kath, had I known about you and this, Um, but yeah, I just didn't. (laughs) Anyway, as you said, you did such a good job with the postnatal recovery. And that's amazing because, you know, as as you said, it's not easy. Young babies, sleep deprived, um, just time poor as well. Busy, busy. It's very easy to go to the bottom of the to-do list. Mm. So where do we start? (laughs) Um, So those first six weeks, uh, all about rest. I've got a podcast episode on like six different tips for this because you're right. it's all about rest and we want to get that medical clearance before we get back into it. But there are some really nice things we can do in this period. I like to think about if you have a vaginal birth, your pelvic floor stretches 300%. That's three times their resting length. So they're amazing. They're perfectly built for the job. Whereas I believe hamstrings, don't quote me on this, but I believe hamstrings strain, like get an injury at about 18% their length whereas pelvic floor stretches 300%. So go hormones, you know, it's just built for the job. But so your pelvic floor area has stretched like an elastic band and your abdominals, you know, if you've had a cesarean, but just being pregnant, everything's stretched. And in this early postpartum period, we want that natural recoil to occur as much as possible. So if you think about that elastic band, we don't want to keep putting it on stretch We want that natural recoil to occur. And it's not just the muscles that have stretched. And I think this is where a lot of people get it wrong. Um, it's, It's not just muscles. You could be the strongest woman in the world, but if you just had a baby... It's your fascia that's con- stretch, your connective tissue, the you know the ligaments and tendons. Like when you eat a piece of steak, it's not just red meat. Sorry if you're vegetarian. Um, it's the white sinew, sinew bit in the steak, and all of that's the soft tissue structures that stretch. And that's why after having baby, that rest and recovery, so that knitting together can occur. 
And that it's like that recoil of the elastic band is so important. Um, and I think sometimes in this early six week period, we can get a bit gung ho and go for really long walks because we're feeling good. And because we used to walk before you're pregnant and perhaps you had a really good childbirth, I did this exact mistake. I had, you know, cl- great pregnancy, first baby, not second, um, textbook birth for the for my first, well, I didn't think it was textbook, my doctor did. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then two weeks after having a baby, I thought, I'm feeling great. I'm going to go for a walk, caught up with my friend, just walked to the local cafe, sat, had a coffee got milk on the way home. So by the time I'm getting home, even though I hadn't walked for a long period of time, I'd been on my feet or sitting and up against gravity for a good three hours or so. And you can imagine if your pelvic floor's under that strain of gravity and it's already really stretched, I started to feel prolapse symptoms on the way home from that walk. Um, So I think that rest is so that natural recoil, that natural healing can occur is really important. Because as I said, you could be the strongest woman in the world, but it's not just your muscles that have stretched, it's everything else. So that would be my biggest tip in the first six weeks is actually, you know, put your feet up, horizontal rest, let's start the pelvic floor, gentle exercises. I do offer some gentle core connect. I don't even call them exercises, just some gentle functional. It's on the Instagram as well. There's a few of them. So yeah, there are some nice things you can do in those early six weeks. But then as you said, it's from the six weeks beyond, once you've got that medical tick of approval, you start your rehab program. And I really do call it rehab because it's not just walking. It's not just Pilates. It's, it's everything together to get your body feeling strong again. Mm. Before we go into that, Kath, what is signs and symptoms of a prolapse? Yeah, good question. So, uh, there's a few, um, Mm. they can be really subtle and then they can be really obvious. So the obvious ones are feeling a lump, vaginal lump or bulge. Perhaps you might have the pelvic heaviness or dragging sensation, and that's what I had. I felt like there was a ton of bricks sitting on top of my pelvic floor. And I said to my husband when I got home, oh, my God, I feel like my insides are going to fall out. Like it was the most horrible sensation of everything just sitting really low. Um, Then there can be more subtle signs of prolapse. Sometimes women have described it described it to me as if they feel like a tampon stuck, but there's no tampon in you. So just this slight irritation. Um, sometimes it can actually be that you're not passing, like you're not able to fully open your bowels or you're not passing urine properly. Um, so, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're the main ones. Mm-hmm. Um So I do have a pelvic health checklist, a free one I can give to you to link. Um, Just it's a really simple yes, no questions where you just go through and yes, yes, or no, 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 no. Any yes questions, I recommend you go to your local pelvic floor physio for an assessment. Okay, great. That'll be fabulous. We'll link that in. So then after those six weeks, assuming that we've had the all clear and then from then onwards, just tailored to where you're at, where your birth's at, how your recovery's gone. Is that right? Yeah. So thinking about your goals, I like to step it back from that. So if you want to get back into running, you're going to have um, different goals like netball, any of those higher impact, and let's bring it back. So first of all, we want to build on those solid foundations of pelvic floor and core. Along the way, you might have um, like inside my program, for example, if you've got breastfeeding aches and pains, we've got workouts that are perfect for breastfeeding aches and pains. So you do a full workout with your core, but we're really targeting the beautiful stretches and exercises to support that area. Or it might be mean that you've got wrist, if you've got wrist pain, you know, you might not be able to do four point kneeling work. So you might have to do more side lying and standing and sitting. So This is where being able to adapt your exercise along the way is so important because what's, you know, someone might start off because they're motivated, they want to get back into shape or I I hate saying that, but you know what I mean? The the Mm. motivation might be to start off with, but if we cannot do something consistent that's easy, that works with them for where they're at, 
it's just going to fall off and people are going to stop exercising perhaps. That's what I find is the biggest thing because mums are busy. So there's no should do. Like there's, I wish it was as clear cut as saying let's do A, B, C and D and then you're going to feel amazing. Mm. It Like it's very much if we need to, how do I describe it? Like if if we can, have you read Atomic Habits? No. Oh, I just started that. Oh, it's amazing. It's like every facet of life. It's just so um, it's so good, isn't it? Work, business, life, relationships, health. Um, yeah. So I think at the end of the day, it, consistency wins. And if consistency for you means five minutes every second day, that's a brilliant starting point. And it's, we want to build up a habit. We want to build on that muscle in terms of that habit of exercise. And if we end up going, for example, if you try to go for your first run but you haven't built up to it slowly and then that first run hurts you or you, it causes leaking, you're not going to do it again or you're probably less likely to do it again. So this is where, yeah, it a postnatal rehab plan based on your goals, but also where you're at, mm. you know, in terms of achiness, um, how strong are you feeling? Do you have abdominal muscle separation that we need to work on? Have you got pelvic floor concerns that we need to boost you up with? And then working on a few things from there. And if a yes. mother's, oh, sorry, Kathy, go. Uh, I was just going to say, no, no, you go. Cause mine's like a future question anyway. So, um, it's really nice to hear you say, Kath, that, you know, even if it's five minutes every second day, I think for for me, for instance, I feel like I have to do a 30-minute workout every single day. I can't commit. You know, after I gave birth to Sunny, I did all of the pelvic floor. I went to my pelvic health physio. I had the internal um, uh, examinations. I did the exercises and then I wanted to do mums and bubs Pilates. But you know, it it got too overwhelming for me because exercise isn't that thing for me like it is for a lot of people. I I got too overwhelmed and then I didn't do anything. So I, I I'm still in that limbo land, and she's two and a half. Of I don't know where to start, and I and that's what was great saying even if it's five minutes every second day because I could commit to something like that. You know, I could mm-hmm. commit to an online program or Pilates or something like that. But then I feel like. Is that just a waste of my time because I'm not getting the added benefits of that 30 minute workout every single day with that 300 minutes for a week? So that's where um, I, you know, my brain goes to is like, okay, so you can just do a little bit to get that, to get at least some sort of benefit. You know, you're absolutely right. I think it's a big transition. Like, I don't know for you. Um, like there's two things I want to cover there. So firstly, the transition to motherhood is massive on so many levels. Like my idea of exercise before I was pregnant was going to an hour long gym class and then having a shower and maybe going to Coles on my way home to pick up a really nice nutritious meal or meeting a friend for an hour long walk and having a coffee afterwards. Like it was decent chunks of my day and I could fit that in because it was just me and I, I had no children. And then as a new mum, I do remember um, when I first started working from home, feeling a little bit like if I just did 10 minutes, five minutes, my kids would climb on me. <laughs> They'd say, mom, mom. They'd pick up my weights and use my weights instead of me, whatever it is. And feeling almost like a little bit dissatisfied that I hadn't done what I'd wanted to do. But I think that's a huge, it's almost like a mindset shift that needs to occur because I I kept doing it, persevering, even though I didn't think it was as beneficial, like as what you said. But it's like a muscle that needs to be built and that building up that habit And just chipping away at it then meant, like I soon worked out, even after 10 minutes of a 50% workout with my kids interrupting me, I still felt better mentally and I still felt better in myself after having spent that time. So for me, it was a big transition to 
ease into exercise in a diff- it was a whole new way of exercising compared to pre-pregnancy. And but for me, I really wanted to build up that consistency. And that's that's a huge reason why I developed my program because it's that easy access. As a new mum, I could not even fathom going. I worked in a Pilates clinic at a physio clinic. I even couldn't fathom going and seeing my colleagues with a four-month baby, five-month baby, because I was like, it's too much effort. It's too stressful. What happens if they need a breastfeed? Oh, my God, this is so stressful. I'm not going to go. So that's why I started doing what I did. And even though it wasn't 100%, that consistency, I just, and it gets easier. You know, you get to do more each day. So I really do think it's about laying down those building blocks one step at a time. And if for you, that's five minutes every second day of imperfect exercise, that's amazing. Right. There was one other thing you talked about that I wanted, I wanted to mention, and I've totally forgotten. <laughs> I have too, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> And so, Kath, if we have a listener who is well past their sort of postpartum period, but perhaps is still experiencing some, you know, incontinence or whatever it may be, even if that's five or more, whatever years past, is it too late for them to change that? Or can those repercussions of birth, I guess, still be changed later in life? Oh, I love this question because it's never too late. Again, it's actually really important. To, it's like, what's it, what do they say? Growing a tree, the best time to grow a tree. I think this is a Japanese proverb. God, I sound, um, how good does that sound? I don't know. I heard it from another podcast. That sounds fabulous, <laughs> by the way. But <laughs> the best time to grow a tree is 10 years ago. The second best time to grow a tree is today. And it's the same thing with exercise. We know that, let's take the pelvic floor example, um, for an instance, we know there's a spike of pelvic floor issues. You're more likely to have issues with pelvic floor as a result of pregnancy and childbirth. There's a spike of issues around this time period in our life. Then it plateaus off a bit. Then there's another spike. Can you guess when it is? Menopause. (laughs) Yeah. So menopause is around the corner for all of us. And this is the time between pregnancies and menopause, we really want to buffer up this area and we want to pad it up because during menopause, we have a whole lot of hormonal changes that occur. Everything becomes a bit stretchier and saggier, you know, the the eyes, the boobs, (laughs) everything, and that includes your pelvic floor. And so it does become a bit more weakened during this time of menopause. So we want to bolster it up as much as possible. But having said that, if you're listening in your postmenopause, it's still like I have had patients in their 70s and 80s still making gains with their strength and fitness and yeah, everything. So yeah, never too late, Shelley. Great question. Amazing. So wrap us up, Kath. Any words of wisdom you'd like to leave to our listeners? Yeah. Look, I think at the end of the day, we invest a lot into growing our beautiful babies, you know, whether or not it's preconception and you're going through fertility treatments or, you know, you put your body on the line for this baby and then we get our baby, a beautiful baby, um, and our body has invested a lot. And I think at some stage of our lives, we need to reinvest back into our bodies, not just for our bodies. It's not about the way we look. It's about the way we feel. It's about that inner strength to help us with that confidence so that we can run around with our kids at the park if we want to play chasey with them without thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to pee my pants, Um, being able to jump on the trampoline with them without thinking, oh, no, I can't do that because, you know, I'm going to leak, being able to jump in waves with them at the beach. So I think it's really about that inner strength and our mental health and our confidence. But at some stage of the game, every single woman listening, I hope, has is able to reinvest back into her body. 
Beautiful. I love that. And I think, I mean, I mean, I've learned so much from this episode because of my sedentary lifestyle. So thank you so much for sharing all your words of wisdom with us. And where can our listeners find you, Kath? Yeah, so I've got a podcast. Check it out. It's perfect for there's preconception stuff, um, pregnancy, postpartum. It's Fitness Mama Podcast, F I T N E S T. Same on Instagram, Fitness Mama um, and website too. And I've got that checklist. I'll send through the details for you as well. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on um, our show today and sharing all your knowledge. It's been invaluable. Oh, I love chatting. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks Kath. Kath. Bye. Okay, bye. Ladies, that's it for another week. Again, I'll drop all the links to the No BS Approach to Motherhood podcast in the show notes. And as always, if you'd like to come and join us for a free seven-day trial inside Fitness Mama to help you prepare your body for birth, to help you feel strong during pregnancy and to help you boost your afterbirth recovery, then join us at fitnessmama.com. And I look forward to seeing you next week or chatting to you next week for another episode of the Pregnancy, Birth and Recovery podcast. Thanks for listening to the Fitness Mama podcast brought to you by the Fitness Mama freebies found at www.fitnessmama.com forward slash free. So please take a few seconds to leave a review, subscribe so you don't miss an episode and be sure to take a screenshot of this podcast, upload it to your social media and tag me at Fitness Mama so I can give you a shout out too. Until next time, remember an active pregnancy, confident childbirth and strong postnatal recovery is something that you deserve. Remember our disclaimer, materials and contents in this podcast are intended as general information only and shouldn't substitute any medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. I'll see you soon.